Good morning. I'm in the building. <laughs> Today is Friday, October 20th, 2017. Thank you for tuning in and logging on. And welcome to Truth It in the AM. It is your boy Truth It here to address any and all things when it's time to and it's time to. And also, by my side, I have the one, the only, too real to be phony. Trooper Joe is in the building. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Morning. How is everybody this morning? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We got some interesting things I think to talk about this morning. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we, we do. do. Uh, first, uh, congratulations to you, Troop. Thank we you. are on a pace to get one thousand views oh. for our video that we did. That's It'll be one of our first videos to hit the one thousand mark. Applaud that. Yeah. That means uh, after about uh, two years, this is my second year of doing this, after about two years of doing it, staying faithful to it, hard work does pay off. I want to tell everybody off. that, yep, stay faithful, stay true, and uh, continue to work on what you're working on, and uh, never give up. That's the main thing. Don't That's give up. Right. Uh, I don't know, a thousand... Don't follow everybody, please, unless it's... Good for us. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to go from 1,000 views to 2,000 views to 10,000 views. We're going to keep going until we are uh, at millions of views. That's that. And uh, once we get to millions of views, that's when uh, we can really do things. But one thing that we can do now that we've reached 1,000 views is 1,000 views is something that we can take to advertisers and say, hey, look, oh, yeah. people are watching our stuff. That's right. See, we couldn't do that way before when we only had uh, you know a lower amount of views. But now... Now we can do that. Yeah, we can bring it to people and it's say... viable. Yeah, that's right. We, <laughs> we're the real deal. Thank you to everybody who watches thank on you. YouTube. Also, thank you to people who listen to the podcast on... Uh, iTunes and also thank you to people who listen to it on blogtalkradio.com. Thank you to everybody. That's right. Thank you so very, very much. Right. We really appreciate it. We're hoping that I'm hoping that everybody else tunes in and maybe maybe they can get some thoughts out of these here. I'm not saying that our opinions are the only opinions, but hopefully they generate thoughts with among everybody and everybody starts to have a real good time with life. Right. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, we have some stuff that we need to talk about, Troop. Uh, yeah. First, there is this terribly <laughs> racist picture oh, that you don't it, think is racist. No, no, it's not that I don't think it's racist. I see so much wrong with that picture. It's okay, like, okay. It's like, it, it, it's like a depiction of the polarization of today's world. It's, and and it also shows that... In t- Today's well, even though everybody's talking this sensitivity towards freedom of speech and sensitivities towards all kinds of rights, nobody's thinking. Uh huh. It's like this is dumb. It's really. very dumb. Yeah, you know. I I hope you people have seen the picture. You know. Yeah, that picture is uh, crazy. It's a picture of a woman standing with two young white women, sta- white girls, mm-hmm. uh, Caucasian girls, standing on each side of the white woman in the middle, and then kneeling in front of them <laughs> is a little black girl, and she has the straps going from, I believe, the uh, two white girls to, to the black to the girl. Clothing, yeah. Uh, I can explain the whole picture, you know. Okay, if you want to go ahead. See, the picture, the picture is, is, is depicting the 17th century, you know, Plymouth Plantation and how, how the clothing of the 17th century was. So these people are dressed up in, in, in um, the clothing from the 17th century. Mm. But, you know, in the 17th century, the little girl, the little, the little black girl in front, they was all volunteered to play the part and do the dress up and stuff. You know, she volunteered to be the toddler. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to be like two years old or three years old. The other two girls are, are like her older sisters or older siblings or something. The straps to the clothes are used at that time to help prop up the toddler so they learn how to walk. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, but the picture is raw. It's just wrong. Why is it wrong if you have the right context of it? They didn't put the context out when they put the picture out. Well, it's hard to put. I mean, not everything 
always has con. I mean, as long as it comes from the right space, I don't think it, I don't think it's their responsibility to have to explain to everybody. Whoever put that picture on post and and and, and got that picture out should put the picture out with, with the preface of what the picture represents. Because to see the picture, you see a black, a white woman with two white white girls. With, with these little black girl on her knees in front of them and the two white girls are holding stuff that totally represents an image of slavery. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, it doesn't. It represents what you explained it was. But after now, I explained people, it. Now, the ignorant can see, will see that and automatically assume, yeah. but when you assume, you make an A out of you and me. Yeah. Now, that, that's, it's wrong for them to assume. If they see the picture, they should try to get the understanding of what it really means, not just jump to a conclusion. Well, that's and, what's wrong with today's society. We yep. just jump right to the right. conclusion. This is a very racist picture. And if it, it on the uh, if you just look at it with no thought at all, mm-hmm. it depicts a, a racist picture. You yes, know, with no thought the, at all. No yes. thought at all. Even the clothing would depict this is slavery. This is what slavery looked like back in the day and stuff. And it was it's like you missed a great opportunity to to talk to the, the lady. She's from the Plymouth Plantation. She does this all the time. Yeah, you know, I'm sure that you know she. That when she does this, she doesn't have a little black girl in front. <laughs> I don't know. The little the little black girl volunteered for the position, right? She, because she's a little black girl. Yeah, I want to play. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll dress up. You know. So, See? so people need to be a little bit. You, know, we need to take time and slow down. Yes. And you know, we we need to really, and if something interests you, find out about it. If something really it makes you sick, you know, find out about that. But start, it's, it's time to, we got the internet, we, we got the truth in the AM show. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> we, we have all these avenues where you can get information about stuff. And you might find out that as you gain more information about something, it becomes more and more interesting. Right. So my, my thoughts are... The picture is innocent. The picture is innocent. The picture is innocent. When I first looked at the picture, <laughs> yep, you can look at it. When I first looked at the picture, I, I, I said it looks like it looks like a slavery picture, yeah. and I was just like everybody else. Yeah. But now that I know the context of the picture, yeah, it's the picture is not the problem. No, it's, it's our not the quick picture. right. It's us jumping to conclusions. That's, that's the problem. That's, so why yeah. should the school have to apologize? For the image of a black girl and a 17th century toddler leash. You want to know how bad it was? I looked at that picture and I didn't even read that headline. No, you just see the picture. I just saw the picture and stuck with the picture and wanted to get outraged. We today in today's society look for reasons to be outraged. We searching desperately (laughs) to find something to be mad at. True. If I could find, if I could be mad at your wristband and your hand sling, then I would. I I would be mad. I don't like. Like the red on that that represents that represents the blood from slaves and you wearing it on your wrist every day when slaves wore shackles and you wearing that on your you a sellout we just look for reasons to be angry and get bent out of shape and be upset over stuff that has no we have no business being angry and upset over that's it's right. a 17th century toddler leash period <laughs> that's what it is that's it yeah, it's a it's a leash, and 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 the lady was invited to show it to the school. Now the students probably got it because yep. they knew this lady was coming to the school to talk about the clothing worn in by the seventeenth century. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure they explained to the uh, teacher <laughs> and they explained to the the students, and all the students had that understanding. My question is, is that why did not the woman, the mother? who shared the picture and got everybody upset and got their panties in a bunch, yeah. why did she not go to the school and ask the school, hey, what's up with this picture, I, I and think, then get educated? I think the, the little girl's mother did go to the school. Well, I think the picture was put out there by someone else. Okay. Uh, someone else minding somebody else's business. Uh, well, Save the little black girl. Uh, well, according to this uh, 
the picture is the writing of other pictures says we got this picture from my daughter's classroom today i won't share my thoughts on this but i would very much like your reactions to it well, maybe they the want mother, people to get mother, bent out of shape over yeah, it the mother busted dick. yeah and it's it's like we need to take a break from getting bent out of shape over yep. stuff that really really this would this this would be insightful to the kids it's mm -hmm. like they're seeing a part of history right there unfold in front of them. They're seeing, they're seeing what the clothing looked like on the Plymouth Plantation. And then they can ask questions from that all over the place. What was the Plymouth Plantation really like? Right. What did the food did they eat? What did they do for fun? You know, what, you know, what did the rest of the kids do and stuff? You know, they could, they're kids. They would have been asking questions about what it's like to be a kid in that time. Whoever shared that picture should be charged with inciting a riot. They trying, they trying, even the way it was written, I would very much like your reactions to it. They want people to pop off and get upset and write letters and boycott and all kinds of stuff. They just want people yeah, mad. But I, I'm, and, and it does too, for me anyways, it does point to the insensitivity of, of people. The, the teachers might have used a little bit more common sense and said, don't put the little black girl down on her knees in front of three white people with leashes on. But the black girl looks like <laughs> she's the smallest. She's smaller than both the other girls in the pictures, and so she's yeah. the one that looks closest to a toddler yeah. in the picture. What, they're going to have that big old tall fat girl <laughs> sit on and get down and, and, and become the toddler uh, in the I, picture? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things in retrospect you could look at and say, could have went this, could have done yeah. this. But it... it, it, it Looking at it in just full face view, that picture is wrong. You, I, I still don't think it's wrong. I think, it, I think it's ignorant. It's ignorance it's of people. You want to know how? It's no, it's not ignorant of the people who took the picture no, or the people who did the picture. It's, it's ignorant of people's reactions exactly. to the picture. And that's yeah, why, that what makes it wrong. No, you, you got to go deep. Yeah, way on back. You know, the image was <laughs> shared several times with Boston 25 News and prompted school officials to sit down with the local police. That's how ridiculous <laughs> people's reactions I, I, were. Out of control. Yeah, police had to sit down with the school to discuss it. Like, what, 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 what were the police saying? Oh, we want to make sure that that girl was not a real slave or was not picking cotton in the classroom? What, they, what, what, what crime could have possibly make been sure committed? Make sure she wasn't being flogged. Yeah, let, make sure she wasn't being whipped, was she? Those whips weren't whips to whip her with them, were they? No, I mean... A real change. Yeah, uh, Superintendent Derek J. Swenson said in, a, in the letter, the director of education for Plymouth Plantation was delivering a lesson on 17th century attire and was demonstrating tethering straps commonly used at the time to help toddlers learn how to walk. The photo shows a white woman posing with two white children and one black child who is crouched on the floor. The girl on the floor is connected to the tethering straps. We realized without this context added to the photo exactly. that it was shared by the classroom teacher. It could be perceived differently, Swenson said. It was never the intent of the lesson to demean or degrade one person or a group. And it did not demean or degrade. How is helping someone learn how to walk degree <laughs> demeaning or degrading and someone. That's how they do things back in those days. We don't do these things. We can't put we we, we do this all the time. We take our little itty bitty knowledge that we have and we juxtapose it on every everything in life. Everything in life. We put it all over the place. And we don't go we don't understand where it came from, the origin of anything, why it's important to that time, or, or anything like that. It, I can understand, you, you know, now that I'm thinking about it even more, the tethering strap. The ground wasn't even even. Mm. <laughs> you know, they, right. Like, I'm teaching the kid to walk on this straight path that's been all leveled out and everything. This is 17th century. <laughs> They're walking on dirt. There's pits, there's holes, there's logs, there's other things. There's, there's smelly things from, the, from people. There's all... There's just things that's all over the place. So the tethering staffs make a whole lot of sense when you got a toddler. I'm going to take a picture with my <laughs> wife. Her standing over me with a whip and me in nothing but chains and a cloth skirt and me saying, no, master, those are whoops me no more. And I want to I want the police to come. I want everybody to come and I want to make everybody make a big deal about it. This is all about nothing. It There's is nothing to see nothing. here. And, 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 and your, your wife would have been, if you take that picture, she would be, uh, what do you call it? Lynched. They would try to kill her. It, it, would, it. it wouldn't go to slavery. It would go to sex. 
Uh, oh yeah, it was. <laughs> I forget what that that lady's name they called that lady. I'm not sure, but all I know is they would try to take my wife's head. They would try to take my life. I'd be a sellout, and they'd try to kill my wife. She wouldn't make it through the night. Yeah, just like this is a sellout. Folks, I wear this because I broke my wrist punching the wall. How so, long has that wrist been broken through? I re-broke it the other day. Oh, you re-broke it again? Yeah, it snapped. Sometimes when I'm training, uh -huh. you know, when I work on bringing my hand back from throwing a left jab so I can bring it back and throw another one mm -hmm. out quick, I... Go to the wall, touch the wall. But if I don't concentrate, uh -huh. <laughs> I hit the wall. <laughs> so you hit the wall too hard and you ended up breaking your wrist. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bone is right in here. So this has nothing to do with anything. That's <laughs> how old my wrist in place. It's true. I think you go a little too hard when you work out. Yeah. I, I think you go a little too hard. That's because that's because the training I received as a young man in the military. You know, it was way different than the way people perceive things in the military now. And I want to talk about that in a few minutes anyway. Okay. You know, the thing that I, I, the training I received in the military, we didn't stop training just because you broke something. <laughs> what? Nah. So if your wrist is broken, they still train you to pick up guns well, and stuff? Way more than pick up guns. Because it was a volunteer type of things that I did and everything. Some okay. of the training that I did, it was all volunteer. You could quit anytime you want to. You Just know? like that little girl could have quit from taking that picture. <laughs> she could have said no, but she didn't. Yeah, yeah. So, so, no. So because it was volunteer and it's all status driven, mm -hmm. it's all macho, you know, the, a lot of the training that I went through. So if you quit, you're out. Okay. So if I break my wrist, I tape it up. <laughs> and I keep going. See, the world isn't like that anymore. No, and I, I'm glad that it's not like that anymore. You, they, they want. You, I mean, training and, and pushing you to continue to train is fine, but when it's time for actual action, what good are you going to be if you and half of your squad got broken limbs, broken ankles, <laughs> taped oh, up ankles, good. and tackle? Really? You be, you be good. Then those. That's how we train. Drives my wife crazy half the time, you know, because I get in. I understand completely why it would drive her crazy. <laughs> I get I get sick in, the, in you know with the heights and stuff like that. Like yeah. When we were doing Pikes Peak. Yeah. I had the air sickness and everything, but I'm trained not to stop. Right. So I just go deep. <laughs> and what, what do you start throwing up or something? Grand Canyon. I got so dehydrated, my kidneys shut down and everything. I got out. <laughs> And then I ended up and I collapsed at the top and ended up in, yeah, my wife has to put up with a lot of nonsense. No wonder why she's in the medical field. She has to keep her husband alive. Yeah, but this is what that's from. I, I lost concentration and I punched into a cement wall. So you don't think soldiers today are as tough as soldiers during your day? But they're not. No? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm not just saying it because of my day versus their day. They, they, they're, they're not. They, some are, some are, some, you know, just like back then. Some of the soldiers in my, my era were tough. That's why I was volunteer. Some of the things I did. Mm -hmm. You could quit anytime you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. It's like, hey, I quit because two weeks from now I know it's going to be rough and I don't want to do it. Well, I know one thing, whether it was your time or my time or the time that's today, I would not have been able to, I would not have made it. No. I would be cry, I would be one of them little, they, my nickname would be Crybaby, because <laughs> I would cry over everything. My nickname was Useless. <laughs> yeah. Useless and Crybaby yeah, in the I, Army, that's what I had two nicknames. Yeah. It was Useless, and, and, and then in Vietnam it was the Shoshone. Okay. <laughs> So the uh, we we had that story of the girl uh, who was on in the picture and took that. There's another story, truth that we need to talk about. Yeah, many, uh, many and, stories. Yes, uh, the story that I want to talk about, and then we can go to whatever story you want to talk about okay. next, since this is Freestyle Friday. <laughs> talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, activists, there are activists in California. Who want to see prostitution legalized? Who wants prostitution uh, brought back yeah. from 150 something years ago and challenge to California's prostitution ban may proceed hmm. according to the ninth district judge? 
Yeah. A federal appeals court gave the <clears throat> go-ahead Thursday to activists seeking to overturn California's 145-year ban on commercial sex. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I think so, too. Actually, I think this, this may be another, uh, another look at... Go deep, folks. Do you know how much is to be involved with bringing back prostitution? How much liability is this going to be involved oh my with goodness. bringing back prostitution? It ain't. It's not going to work. Uh, and, and people, people, look at, look at people. I want y'all close your little eyes. Mm -hmm. You got your eyes closed. I want you to, to, to visualize what you think a prostitute look like. Got your eyes closed. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to tell you what I saw the prostitutes looking like in Amsterdam and stuff. They were about 300 pounds. Wow. They were in these windows with these little skimpy clothes on. They, they, their fat was just rolling every other place that they wanted to go. They do not look like what you perceive them to yes, look like. Yes, they do not. <laughs> um, Nothing about 300 pound people and stuff like that, but that's not the image that I know people want with the prostitution. They want right. these very hourglass shaped women and stuff like that. Or men, I don't know. <laughs> uh, a three judge panel of the 9th U.S. District Court of Appeals in San Francisco said the plaintiff's legal challenge against the ban may proceed. The plaintiffs say the current law violates the right to engage in consensual sex, as described in a 2003 U.S. Supreme Court ruling that revoked criminal laws against gay sexual acts. I believe people in this country have the right to act this way and make a living this way, Attorney Lewis Serkin told a judicial panel. Uh, California banned prostitution in 1872, mm -hmm. defining every common prostitute as a vagrant subject to a $500 fine and six yeah. months in jail, which is what how it should be. Well, that was vagrancy law. That, yep. That's another story. Yep. The uh, <laughs> law slightly changed in the 1960s, the Chronicle reported, by banning by branding prostitution or soliciting prostitution as disorderly conduct punishable with a thousand dollar fine and six months in prison yeah. the legal challenge was brought by three ex-prostitutes a would-be client and espler erotic service providers legal educational and research project they received good news thursday after the ninth circuit judges hinted that some scrutiny of the laws was needed why should it be a, this is what one judge said true why should it be illegal to sell something that's <laughs> legal to give away? Judge Carlos Bea asked, as the Chronicle reported, I wouldn't be surprised if he <laughs> wanted to get some prostitutes himself. Uh, Judge Consuelo, Consuelo Callahan II saying, prostitution, like gay sex, had been subject to moral disapproval because the Supreme Court case dealt with individual rights. The right to prostitution could be a natural extension of Supreme Court precedent, she said. Deputy Attorney General Sharon O'Grady fired back at the suggestion, saying the difference between the legalization of prostitution and gay sexual activity was the commercial aspects and the commodification of sex. The state is not telling anyone who they can sleep with, she said, but noted that banning prostitution was an easy place to draw the line to protect against violence, drug, and sexual trafficking. That's, I, hey, there's a whole lot more about prostitution than just the act of sex. Prostitutes, you know, these, these women that's out there, they, some of them, uh, most of them are in, in, in dire needs and whatever reason that they're doing the prostitution or selling their bodies out there. But they're putting themselves in harm's way. They're still women, you know? Yes. They're still, as we quote to say, the weaker sex. You know, they're going out there doing something that's illegal. Right. Yeah, you know, and, and in doing something that's illegal, you just can't holler for help, so... How many of these people are putting their life in, in jeopardy every time that they're out there doing prostitution? I'm not advocating for the legalization of prostitution mm -hmm. because there's just way too many legal boundaries and obstacles to get over to legalize prostitution. It's like 
this, this medical, this infectious. We just did a thing on the AIDS thing in California. You know, it, it, it's like there's lawsuits that can come out of all kinds of things like this if you legalize um, prostitution. All right. A texter says, is anyone else okay if California just succeeds from the union <laughs> altogether? Uh, no, we can do what we talk about. <laughs> another another texter, uh, I got the M Red Balls, I don't know who that is, says Trump is sin-free and all Republicans are too. It is the one true path. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. But I'm that sure those are Democratic judges. The two Democrat drugs, oh. dr- uh, judges are the ones that were okay yeah. for the a prostitution thing to go along. The I, third I, judge I figured, was a Republican. I, yeah, I figured, I figured the two that were all uh, all about these these um, okay, it's all right, you're infringing on the on the on on the rights, the freedoms, and all these things that we have given to us from the Constitution with Democrats. They're not looking at anything. They're just making noise. Well, I don't get this noise making, but I am not an advocate of legalizing prostitution. But then on the other hand, <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Lord, they could me. find a way, oh, my goodness. if they could find a way yep. to make prostitutes a, a, a viable a, a, a viable job opportunity. With the safety for the person, if they they get medical treatment, if if they have um, if one thing I don't think they'll ever control is the status of it. It's, it's the status is going to obviously go to the ones who don't participate in prostitution. You know, they they're going to become more morally morally sound and, and more judging and everything that goes along with the moral type of thing. But if they can find a way for 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 these women to 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 want and men I guess who want to well, I don't know the men make it difficult uh, to participate in this kind of action and stuff they do it in other countries like I said it's regulated and they do it in this country and they Las, do it in Vegas. Las Vegas Las Vegas yeah the Bunny Ranch yeah so I mean in 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 that regard, because we're not going to get rid of the the hormonal urges of of everybody wanting to have sex, especially during the younger the younger part of your life. Well, that's why it's such a big booming business. Exactly, um, and it's not that difficult to do. Like some people might find right. it difficult. But. Um, so we just I, talked about the Bunny Ranch. The Bunny Ranch they have it um there, and um it's a safe, controlled environment. They yeah. have cameras, so. People don't, uh, you know, the women are safe and yeah. the men are safe. However, even at the Bunny Ranch, allegedly, there are women there who are hooked on drugs yeah. and uh, looking to get paid the easy way yeah. for fixes. Yeah, because they they can. It's, I mean, that's the sad part about the whole thing. Just because you can doesn't mean that you, you should. should. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. They can you know, they carry around that 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 workstation all the time. <laughs> it's right there on the person. Right. You know, but yeah, you know, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one. But I'd be an advocate against legalizing prostitution. Absolutely. I I, I, I would. I, I would think that the, the the things that come about from it are just too great. Well, They're just too great, and it opens up doors for for. I would think a lot of younger people, rather than try to challenge themselves to go on and do something that takes a whole lot more, in, you know, effort and stuff. Well, I can make money over here and doing this here, mm-hmm. and then I'll just go on a vacation over here, you know. And if I need to make money coming back, I can make money coming back. And Facts, then, <laughs> right? You know. So I, I don't know. I well, don't know. this is too, too way over my head. Well, it's oh, not. It, don't worry about it. Your boy Truth, they got it. Here's my here my thoughts. As if we need more proof that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Look no further than California. First, they have the nerve to be okay with no longer charging people with a felony yes. who purposely transfer HIV virus to others, or knowingly having HIV and going to a blood bank. And donating blood. Yeah. Now the courts have given activists an opportunity to go back to bring prostitution 
from 145 years ago, True. <laughs> yeah. What next are they going to do in California? I, I don't know. This are track. they going to give parking tickets for first degree murder? Maybe. California has always <laughs> been somewhat of a trendsetter in terms of yeah. being weird and not doing things that they are <laughs> supposed to do. They, uh, hello Hollywood. Hollywood has That's been. Why? Yes. Stay. They no Vegas wonder is around the corner, right around the corner from it, and no wonder why we have all these scandals now happening with Harvey Weinstein oh. and all of these sexual misdeeds that he did, and now other producer, uh, other uh, CEOs, one of the top people in Amazon has been accused Amazon Films, and he's ousted. Uh, these things are happening in California. California is a. It's some people say a party place. <laughs> it's a it is a party place, uh, but they headed down. They they are headed to hell quickly. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and 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 um, I don't really go religious all the time, even though I have a show Archangel. <laughs> a return to chivalry, <laughs> and that's my whole business and movement for life is to bring everybody back to this. a chivalrous way of being, and that has a lot of religious overtones in it, but. But sometimes you have to stop and you have to take a look at reality. Please do. <laughs> Prostitution, even though you can't do it, it's something something that's dangerous for the woman, dangerous for the guy. Some yep. of these women might just have knives and they're just out there wanting to rob the guy. You know, the guys are just stupid. Think yeah. about 20 Men years, are very stupid. You know, go out there, yeah, I'm going to pick up a prostitute. Yeah. Yep. And then, hey, babe. <laughs> and they get knifed and robbed. <laughs> or vice versa, they knife and rob the lady. Yeah, they I do. Don't know. And then, and then, what about the 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 you legalize it? There's still going to be an underground to it. Right. Yep. Yeah. There's still going to be. And what about that underground? I think that that no, it's just way too big to try to legalize something like that. It's crazy. Yeah. With all these sexual allegations yeah. that are going on in Hollywood, you think they'd be doing more to protect good people. Yet they are essentially fighting for HIV yeah. to become more normalized. <laughs> and, and now prostitution. Yeah, we'll normalize HIV. And who who would be more likely to get HIV according to all the studies and statistics? People who who, who have a promiscuous lifestyle. Right. So let's legalize prostitution. Yeah, let's and spread it and then really, spread it knowingly. Yeah. What are you trying to get rid of a downsize the population? <laughs> I, I think so. Population control is something. And then, you know, what are you going to do about the jobs? Somebody got to buy this stuff. Well, Troop, uh, well, why should it be illegal to, uh, let me see, why should it be illegal to sell something that's free to give away? One of the judges asked. That's what one of the judges asked. Why should it be illegal to sell something that's free to give away? I don't know. Maybe human trafficking. Maybe <laughs> yeah, more yeah. widespread of STDs. Uh, what about the, the, the fact that prostitutes have pimps? They got pimps. And pimps abuse women. What about the abuse that women will go through once it's legalized? And, and, then, and then there's this hidden let's not ever talk about it kind of thing like, like this here. A uh, uh, majority of you Johns are unhappy at home. Right. So you're sneaking. Yep. You're sneaking out on your loved one. Yep. Yeah. So there goes the moral fiber of marriages. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Throw marriage away. Too. Yep. Don't need it anymore. Yeah. And you want to talk about protecting the same Californians are the same people that want to talk about protecting uh, women from rape and abuse. Yeah, they're just perpetrating it like this here. Yeah, how are you going to protect the women from rape and abuse if you legalize prostitution? Uh, yeah. Unless you have a place like the Bunny Ranch or Bunny Ranches where things like that are under a lot of scrutiny and under a lot of focus and, and watched and policed, it's going to go crazy. And if you're not going to arrest people now because you made it legal, then a pimp can just start trafficking. What about sex trafficking? Yeah, you, little I, girls. 16-year-old girls. seem to be exploding all over the place. Right. And I tell you, you know, some of these little girls, it's like, damn, how'd you get so big? I am right. <laughs> it's like, you're just a child, but look at you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's 17 nah. years old, and I can't imagine her uh, ended up going to California. I actually have a 20-year-old yeah. a, a who's moving to California next month. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not for anything stupid like that. But I have real serious concerns about her. Earthquakes, HIV, <laughs> now prostitution being legal. Fires. Uh, yeah, fires. Is a California. Maybe fires is hell coming to earth already. I don't know. Could but oh. my goodness, I hate California now. Florida, California, and Chicago, the three states that I hate. I, I think we should just, if we can't, we can't really regulate prostitution. We can't get rid of prostitution. So this is one of those things where I say just, it's like, use your smart brains, you know, and, and leave it alone. I would advocate for everybody don't participate in prostitution, especially you guys that are married. You know, hug your wife, love your wife and stuff. It's your wife. You know, and, and, and you, the wives, hug your husband and stuff. Don't send them out the door to go down and look for something on the street. Right. Do your job, women. You if know. women did their jobs, there would be no need for prostitution. I, I in some think. cases, I have to, I, 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 I would think that, that that might be the case. But if you just... If you just base your whole relationship on sex, then it's like, it ain't going to be sustainable. Right. Don't base your whole relationship on sex, but understand that you have a man who has needs. And if you're not going to provide the needs for the man, he's going to go and get those and he's going to pay for them. How dare he work a full time job and pay all the bills in the house and you're not doing your job to the point where he has to go and pay and solicit sex from a stranger. Uh, speaking of soliciting sex I ain't going with that. I ain't going with that. Hey, I ain't going do <laughs> your job, women. When you said I do, that means I do do my job. When you say I do, there's sickness, there's health, and there's needs. And as a wife, you are supposed to provide needs for your husband. It says it in the Bible. Do your job. I, I'll leave that one alone because I'm sure the women are saying, you guys can't do your job. That 15 seconds just <laughs> Hey, hey, maybe if he had more training in his job area, he would last more than 15 seconds. Listen, if you put me in a boxing ring right now, I wouldn't last one round because I'm so out of shape. But if you put me in the boxing ring every day, all the time, I would eventually get better and last longer than three minutes. So I don't want to hear. That's a poor excuse. Maybe he's only lasting three minutes because he's not getting enough training at home. Train your husband, do your job, and these things won't have to happen. I, I, I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> Listen, I am, a, I, am so, I am such a firm believer in a woman doing their job. Just like a woman. Listen, a man has expectations of doing things in a, in a marriage. Sometimes the expectation is to provide for the household. Sometimes it's to do that. Sometimes it's the woman's expectation to provide for the household. We live in a new age with these millennials. You never know. But at the end of the day, if you are not doing your job, then that's the reason why the man is in, he prevents infidelities. What's the number one to, and two reasons? reason for divorce money and sex and they are always interchangeable do your job in the sex department and your marriage will make it period i am a firm believer in that my wife i my wife knows do your job and you don't have to get fired the only way you get fired is if you don't do your job I'm sure you wait out there. <laughs> no, I'm not looking for the jobs. Take care because jobs it. get done. I'm employed. <laughs> look at look at the story in Florida. Troop two hundred and seventy seven people in a sexting. Two hundred and seven yeah. two over two hundred people whose wives or girlfriends were not doing their jobs. If they were doing their jobs, this sex ring would not have happened. I I don't know what this sex stuff. Sex is way out of my league. Well, I, it's like I'm. I have a for love. If you, get, if you surround yourself with love and you give it love and everything, everything comes. Yep. It, it, it's all good. Right. You know. But I love is see, not sustainable by itself. Of course it is. Okay, right. You could say, oh, I love you, but I'm not going to get up and clean the house. I love you, but I'm not going to pay any bills. I love you, but I... you're not loving them. And if you're not sleeping with them, you're not loving them. Exactly. That is my point. Do your job, women. (laughs) Women from the sound of my voice. (laughs) Do your job. You can talk. Oh, it's my body. Well, yeah. No, it's not your body. The second you said, I do, it became both of you guys' bodies. And you need to use your body to satisfy your man. Period. Do your job. There won't be any problems. Don't start none. Won't be none.
I'm so serious. I guess he is. <laughs> I'm not going there. I'm not. I, I'm on the opposite side of the fence. Like I think that the, you, you join a relationship as marriage, and in that marriage, there's responsibilities on both parts. Absolutely, both parts. And part, and one of those many <laughs> responsibilities is keeping your husband sexually satisfied so he can focus. On yeah. work and focus on his responsibility. Yeah, but I, I think the bigger part of that relationship should be keeping both of you is keeping together so that you have an interaction that's sustainable, so that you you, you like coming home to to your to your loved ones because that's your best friend. You know, absolutely those, those type of things. Sex comes on later on and stuff. No, like that. no, no. That you you were more, first off. I agree with you. You're one hundred percent right. All those connections and all those emotional connections are very important. But we have to accept the fact, and women have to accept the fact that men have physical needs. The uh, <laughs> men have needs. They men get a need to go for. Why do you think they say men think with the wrong head? They think it's the wrong because they no, not because they're ignorant, because they have a physical it's a physical thing. Scientifically, men need sex. They're they 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 are in their sexual prime from like thirty two to like thirty six or something like that, where they need it. Need, need it. Gotta have it. Yes. Women's sexual prime happens like thirty six and on or whatever till their forties or whatever. Where they need it. It it's a sci- it's a scientific thing. A scientific is that even a word? It's a scientific thing. It's, it's been scientifically proven. Yes, it's been scientifically proved. Thank you. It's, I was in. I was drowning. It's in there. the moment. Huh? Yeah. Scientifically proven that men need and crave sex from a physical standpoint. It's not a hobby. It's not something that they can just go or go on with or go on away with for months or years. They actually need it. And when they don't get it, they find other ways to get it because they're not thinking straight. I liken it to all that. Yeah. It's like being addicted to drugs. Sometimes if you don't get the drugs that you need, people go out on the streets. People go into other places. They get the drugs from someplace else, but no matter what, their focus becomes mainly drugs. Everything we do in our society, from the way we dress, from the way we act, from the way we talk to other people, is predicated around sex. But, but, check go there. Look here. Now, if, if it's just predicated around sex, yep. where's the relationship part of it? Why even get married? You Why just, even do anything? You just said sex lasted all the minute and thirteen seconds. Yeah, and that's it. That, that's about it. Yeah, yeah, you have you have the rest of your life to live with that person. Yeah, but you, it, it, for that minute and thirteen seconds and stuff, and and you don't feel satisfied at home or whatever for whatever reason, mm-hmm. you go out into the world and find it on your own and stuff. Yep. Your man 13 seconds at home ain't going to be there much longer. Right, it's not. So that's why if you don't feel satisfied at home, the one thing that should also be a part of your marriage is communication. And yeah, you I agree. Sure, yep. Communication should be the first part and of you marriage. And you should go to your woman, men, and say, hey, look, listen. <laughs> hey, pay attention. You're not doing your job. Your job needs to be done right. If I you think, don't want me, listen. I was told. I God. think. I think spontaneity is is, is, is a much better way. Absolutely. You, you, you might be sitting down on on the couch and, and and feel playful and stuff like that, and and then it, it might just be that boom like that, and that's a good thing. Yep. But if you're coming in there, <laughs> yeah, just looking around, right? How yeah, you got all that perfect? <laughs> All right, I like just smell enough the house and all that aftershave lotion. Right, but true, do you know? In so many marriages, remember. <laughs> <For a> minute. <laughs> I have to say it again. Divorce number the number one reason or number two reason, depending on which a study you want to look at, is lack of sex. So sometimes okay. when you say I like spontane- spontaneity, and I'm okay, I, so I'll wait for it to spontaneously happen. And then a month goes by and nothing spontaneously happened. Well, I'm spontaneously going to leave the house and someone's going to get their feelings hurt. And if I get caught, you you could be mad at me all you want. But I'm going to say, do your job. If you would have <laughs> did your job, I wouldn't be out here. Would you sneak out and go get ice cream for the snore if you have a refrigerator full of ice cream in the house? No, because you have ice cream at the house. 
So I will not sneak out and get my ice cream if I'm getting ice cream at home. All right, I think I'm gonna have enough of this conversation. <laughs> I'm still I'm against prostitution being legalized in any fashion. I can see I can see the 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 physical and and psychological need that he that so eloquently been presented by by Drupid over here. I can understand that. I can understand. I can see that. I can I, I can definitely see that the women are going to say, my man ain't getting nothing. <laughs> I'm shutting that boy off for him. <laughs> I see I can see that too. <laughs> And I say, women, let's work together to help yeah. fight prostitution. Let's yeah. work together to help there fight pr- promiscuity. Yeah. And let's work together to promiscuity. And let's work together to, to fight love, infidelity. Love and, and we do that. Love, communication, communication, and doing yeah. your job. And then, <laughs> to do your job, and it'll help no one. These 200 something men who got caught trying to get prostitutes, some offering $100 truth for sex. $100. And I some of them were married. That. Me neither. I don't understand. Oh, wait, well, I understand because their <laughs> wives at home wasn't doing their job. But so. $100, it's you bad. Right. You must be bad. Must be. It's, what? $100 for sex? Damn. Well, Florida police arrested <laughs> 277 people, including doctors, cops, and pharmacists, during a week-long undercover sexting operation. You know what they called the Operation Troop? Right. Operation No Tricks, No Treats <laughs> began October 10th and ran until October 15th, according to a press release from the Polk County Sheriff's Office. They should change the name of that Polk to Polk. Polk County Sheriff's Office. During the operation, undercover detectives and investigators from several law enforcement agencies posted false advertisements on websites, social media sites, and phone apps posing as prostitutes or to solicit sex workers. Investigators reported 209 of those arrested were accused of soliciting undercover detectives. Uh, 51 reportedly others had displayed themselves as a prostitute on the internet. The office stated 17 others were arrested for other offenses. That's just crazy. (laughs) That's the most we have ever arrested in the history of the sheriff's office. (laughs) One of the men uh, arrested what was a show? sergeant. <laughs> was a sergeant at his office, Sergeant Sergeant Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz, who had been on the force for seventeen years, resigned. Now, now he's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look at we're gonna have a sting on Block A over here, in yeah. Home County. Don't go over there. <laughs> see, si, see, si, senor. I'm okay. Where you Where you going, Sarge? Uh, block going to a. Block A. I'll be back. Is that what they're going to have is that is it really that powerful that it makes you so you can't even think? Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Hey. You can't think when you <laughs> true. You've never you, you've never you been in, just think and get caught in it. You've never been in need that bad where you couldn't think straight? No. Oh, I have. I have. I most <laughs> certainly have. You go right out there and do things. Yep. Want to run into traffic. <laughs> just do anything to get over it. Uh the yeah, I feel bad. This man was on the force for 17 <laughs> years. The force for 17. 17 years. And he had to resign because he got caught with a prostitute. <laughs> it looked like- look at him. That's him who got caught. Oh, you're so wrong. Poor <laughs> Luis. Luis <laughs> did so wrong. Dang, Luis. Louis, you know what? You need counseling. You know what? You, well, yeah, you do need counseling, marriage counseling, because you need to Man. tell her his wife that she's the reason why all of this happened and you it's her fault. You need to some excuses. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, Oh, throw yourself on the mercy of the world. Just say, I'm stupid. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. setting up this thing. And <laughs> you get caught in it. Yeah, it I, I have no idea how he got caught in it, but it's definitely... That's that's, a, that's the saddest story of all of them. I, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, I can't understand. But I guess it speaks to the power. Of this the thing. power of it, about. yes. This is that powerful. Yes, it is. That, that uh, powerful. Judd identified some other suspects arrested <laughs> as a cancer surgeon, a teacher, a pediatrician, an Air Force One veteran, retired deputy sheriff, retired police officer, active colonel in the U.S. Marine Corps, and several pharmacists. They range in age from 16 to 74 years old. 16-year-old boys trying to solicit sex from prostitutes. 
Florida. Florida, <laughs> move it over to Cali. Yep, Florida. Yep, we just, we, we Jeremy in the whole country physically. We're moving over there. Yep, and and my my poor guy, <laughs> take him with it. Right, I feel bad for that guy. Well, hey, I, you know, I I feel bad that his that seventeen years goes down the drain and he had to uh, resign. But at the same time, he. Uh, Sexual tra- sex trafficking is a real issue. Oh, sex trafficking is a real issue. All that kind of trafficking is, is a real issue. And it's a billion, built, multi billion dollar industry. And it's devastating to, to, to the youngest, the youngest of women, not, not to the oldest of women. It's devastating to the youngest of women. They're being physically kidnapped. And I want to shout out kudos to um, um, Robin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she 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 works really really hard at trying to bring awareness to sex trafficking. Yeah, and it's something that people pay little attention to because it's like, no, that can't happen in today's world. Yep. Yeah, it can. I know girls that I used to go to school with that uh, ended up going to New York with a boyfriend, thought they were just going to party yeah. and everything, yeah. ended up getting caught up in sex trafficking. Oh, I had no way to get home, and he said the only way I'll be able to get home is if I do this, if I have sex with these two men. And now, granted, it was only it was they had to have sex with two men just to get money to get home, and then they were out of it. Mm-hmm. But they still got caught in a trap where they had to use their bodies to get back to safety. Yeah. So I I I, I didn't know it was sex trafficking. I didn't way back in the day. I had to go get my my niece from down there in, in combat zone that used to be downtown in Boston. And everything mm-hmm. I had to go down there. Yep. Had to, had. To, Bring the Billy Go Gruff with me. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a texter says, how many of those busted were involved in human trafficking and trafficking of minors for sex? Well, uh, you, you don't know because don't know. sometimes the 16-year-old and 17-year-olds look like grown women. You you never yeah. you can't tell. It's rough out there. But that's, they, they shouldn't be out there listening to sex in the first place. That's what I feel. Even if they got needs, <laughs> right? Or even if they're like my boy, who just he just, he just bald stupid and he done lost a lot of ground, right? Because it's like you potted the stick, <laughs> right? I uh, <laughs> you got caught a lot. A couple of texters are saying Jesus is coming. This is the end of days. Well, the end of days. I don't could know. Be. It could very could well could be. be. I can't speak for Jesus and can't speak for God, but. All the signs and symptoms and all the things that come in the Bible, you know, kind of point to this. Something's going on. Right. Something going on. All right, Troop, I think it's time for us to take a break, and we'll be right back on Truth in the AM. And women, think about how you can do your job today. (laughs) Ha! 